Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. You asked for it, now I'm going to give it to you. How to make a custom card for your car or your Diecast Hot Wheels, whatever you wish. All right. So the first thing you need to do is to figure out exactly what you want. So I'll go ahead and go online here, and I'm looking for a background of some kind. Now, this is going to be a lot of fun, so grab yourself an adult beverage and follow along. So, looking for a background. Ooh, I like that. You got cracked concrete or whatever like that. Um, geez, there's there's so many selections of things when you go to select something here. Let's uh, let's just pick something real quick. I'll just say this, okay? Now, if I wanted to use this, then that's what I would do. I would go ahead and right click and say Save Image As. Now, with that there, look real close here around here okay there's a watermark in there okay so be careful what you select if you're gonna pick something that you want for a background it may have that in there and if you can't remove it then you're gonna have a hard time with it okay I've already got my selection of what I want let's go ahead and go into uh, let's see let's go into Corel draw now Corel draw is the program that I happen to be using here okay um, you can use uh, photo paint or whatever you have for your computer but if you're gonna be doing this and having fun with it you might need to upgrade and get yourself a decent graphics program okay so I've got Corel draw and I've got a few others now let's go ahead and let's start here let's let's put a box on here a rectangle there we go. Now let's go ahead and size this. Now the template that I use is 4.25 by 6.5. That's the size that will fit into one of those protectors. Okay, so that's the size of your card right there. Now we need to get our background. Let's go ahead and I'll go to my file here. This is one that I previously downloaded. There we go. All right, there it is right here. Let's pull that over. Okay, now let's bring this in. We're going to go ahead and resize this to fit. As you can see here. That looks pretty good. Let me enlarge the page. Let's see here. Wait a second. There we go. Okay, now that's what we got for our background. It's 4.25 up here in the corner, 4.25 by 6.5, and that's in inches. Okay, that's what I want to use for my background. Now let's bring in any logos that we want to use. Now this is where it's going to get fun, okay? I'm kind of uh, tagging on my friend Keith over at Outlaw Speed Shop. All right, and we're going to make a card for him. Here we've got this Outlaw Speed Shop decal or, or this logo here, but I've got another one I cleaned up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Corel Draw, pull that off to the side. Wait a minute, let me put that back. Sorry about that. Where the hell did it go? There it is. Let's say copy. There we go. Now come back into Corel Draw and let's paste it. Okay, there it is. So put it where you want and then go ahead and size it appropriately. I went ahead and cleaned this up already. So that's looking pretty good. Now as you work, try and keep things centered the way you want to. So let's go ahead and get that aligned and get it centered. All right, that looks good. 
All right, the next thing we want to do is what else do we want to add to the card? Now, Keith, he's a really cool dude, and he's into the, uh, the skulls and the barbed wire and all kinds of stuff like that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to introduce you to another program, okay? Okay, let's go ahead, and we're going to use this Impixio program. I've already found a piece of barbed wire that I want to use on this card, and we're going to click on the photo cutter, as you see here. It's one of my favorite programs. Now, it all comes in a group. Here's the barbed wire that I want to use. Now, I want to get rid of this white background, and later on, we're going to get rid of this round uh, barbed wire here. I just want to use these strands. So let's go ahead and use the red pen, and that will erase, as you see here, the unwanted background. This takes a little bit to, for the program to work, okay? I'm not going to mess around with the stuff on the bottom too much. Let's go ahead and clear the stuff on the top. Looking good. Okay, let's zoom in using my little mouse here. That is really cool. I'll tell you what, this has saved me so much work by using this program. Okay. Now there's still a little bit of white in there. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer. We can get rid of that. Same thing in these little notches. Now there's still some in some of these notches here. If you come down here and use that feather tool and slide it over ever so slightly, it'll take away the white in those notches. Okay, zoom back out and come over to this other side and get rid of that white also now if you look up here on top you can see how much white is still left in there and that feathering process took away a lot of it Too much. Okay, that's looking good. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to crop the picture. We want to get rid of this stuff on the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and do the cropping. Hit custom. If you don't hit custom, it will move everything equally so if you grab it from the corner it'll move the other corner and stuff like that come in just a little bit off the edges and hit return there we got it saved now what you'll do is you go up here and you'll save it and bring it over to Corel draw that's how the Impixio works and again there's all kinds of other things here that you can use that will help you with your photo editing and I'm going to bring in to Corel Draw, there we go. Oop, wrong one. And what I'm looking for, I've already got it saved, is some bar is some barbed wire that I already cleaned up. And here we go. Here it is. Let's go ahead and bring that over. Nice. Now, let's rotate that 90 degrees. Let's shrink it down a little bit more. Now let's slide that over here now. Let's zoom in. That's looking good. Kind of gives it that outlaw speed shop vibe. Now, that's excellent. Well, let's go ahead and click on that again, and let's make a copy of it. Now over here, we'll say paste, and let's bring it over. Now if you bring it over like this, it stays on the same uh, plane, the same level. As long as you don't go up or down with it, it'll stay equal and parallel, okay? So let's get it to where we want it, looking good. 
All right, click on that one. Hit your, your shift key, hold it, click on that one. Now they're both locked in. Let's go ahead and say object, group, and group it. Now, no matter what you do, they're grouped now, see? Okay, cool. Now here's what we're gonna do now. Let's go ahead and take the whole card and let's realign everything like I was telling you before. Keep everything lined up the way you want to. Okay, now that's lined up. Let's zoom in again till we see what we got. All right, there's some other things I wanna put in here too. So let me shrink that down and a lot of these things I downloaded already, but you can search for anything you wish. There we go. Let's see. Now on your card, that area at the bottom of your card where the car sits, sometimes it's really hard to see that car. So let's go ahead and put a black background in there. Now this is black texture, all right? This is black texture, and you've got something to when you put a car on there, it's going to stand out. And then again, like I said, you'll come in, you'll hit everything, outline everything, and then line it up. Nice, all right? now. I've gone this far and I want to put some wording down here okay but let's go ahead I've already went ahead and did all this this lining up and everything okay here's what I've got that didn't work there we go this is what I've got so far I got the logo from Outlaw Speed Shop I've got the two pieces of barbed wire I've got this texture in the background, and I've got an Outlaw Speed Shop Custom. All right, that's what I wanted. Now I did the same thing, except I have a laser jet printer, and it has the ability to flip the paper or the card over whatever you have and print on the back. Now I'm gonna do two different methods here. I'm gonna show you the one that I do in paper for your benefit, and then for those who have just like a regular inkjet printer, and then I'm going to show you what I do with the laser jet printer. Now, as I've got this one, this card is centered on the page. So what I'll do is I'll highlight that, the whole thing. Make sure that everything that you want grouped is grouped so it doesn't shift around like your wording or your letters, etc. I'll come into Object. I'll say um, Align, Center to Page. Boom. See what happens? It wasn't grouped that's what happens all right so let's go ahead and get out of that now let's hit it again object group and group it good now hit it again object align and distribute center to page now that card is now centered in that eight and a half by eleven now down here, when you want to do the back of your card, down here you can add a page. You can see it down here where I'm pointing with the pointer, okay, down in the bottom left corner. And then I've got page two. Now I've gone ahead and I've already outlined page two and set everything up. I found this picture on the internet. I surrounded it with barbed wire and filled that in. Here's Keith's web page outlawspeedshop.com and then i put a couple of other things down here on the bottom of the card all right like choking hazard for anywhere from zero to three years old okay some people put that stuff on there i put it on there just so people can't come back and try and sue you for your their kids swallowing your match your, your hot wheels cars tires okay i put facebook instagram youtube i put that on there then I put this little disclaimer on the bottom. Gosh darn it. I put this little disclaimer down here about Hot Wheels as a registered trademark, etc. Now, to remember this, 
the registered trademark thing and all that. If you're going to make a card for yourself, you won't have any problems with it. If by chance you happen to do something Disney like Mickey Mouse or Nightmare Before Christmas or whatever, and you plan on getting on eBay and selling your stuff, guys, all I can tell you is be careful. Sometimes, and I've seen it happen in the airbrush community anyways, these people will come after you and they will come after you with a lawsuit hot and heavy. All right? I promise you. I've seen it happen to other people and they will do it. So watch out for the copyrighted stuff. Okay? Anyway, so we've got this here and we uh, printed it up. And we'll, we'll do that uh, portion of the video next. Okay, we're back. Here's the print that I made from the computer with Keith's design on the front, okay? I outlined it in red. That looks pretty sharp. Now, what I've got here is regular poster board, all right? Regular poster board. What I did is I sprayed a couple coats of this spray glue that I got at, at uh, Walmart, all right? Multi-purpose, it's in the hobby section, okay? Then, what you're gonna do is you're going to take your print and you're going to look at it here and if you can hold it up to the light you can make out where the card is now when I cut out this poster board I cut it out to where it was larger than the print if that makes sense and I'll show you that in a second here so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get me a pencil or a pen all right and then I'm gonna find the bottom corners of the card, like there and there, okay? I've already got the spray glue on here. I'm gonna take the poster board with the glue side down and set it over the back of the card that I printed, okay? Then I'm gonna take this roll of tape and I'm gonna roll it to help it adhere to the paper. Now, here's today's tip from your Uncle Polly. Okay? When you're spraying your poster board, spray your poster board with the glue, not the paper. The glue will soak into the paper and it will ruin your print. Okay? It's not going to soak as much into the poster board. And once you give it a little time to dry, then you can attach it to your paper and it won't show through. All right, now you can see your card. You can see the outline of where the card is, okay? That's looking really, really good. Now, get some of this stuff out of the way here. The next step is to get yourself a really nice straight edge. Go ahead, find your edge of your print, like you see there, and make sure that you got a nice sharp blade all right because you'll tear everything up get you a nice sharp blade press firmly and there you go you trim that edge of the card same thing all the way around find your edges just like that This is looking really sweet. And if you have to come back in and trim things up, then that's not a big issue. Now, about the corners. And again, here's another tip from your Uncle Polly, okay? I got this on Amazon, and you can also find this on my Amazon Marketplace page. This is a corner cutter. 10 millimeter corners, four millimeter corners, and seven millimeter corners. I like to use the 10. Go ahead and set it down. Put this in the corner. Make sure that it's in there square and flat. 
hit the white button. There you go. Perfectly cut corner. And again, make sure it's in there flat and it'll click for you. Same thing there. Just like so, okay? How professional does that look? That looks absolutely excellent, all right? Now, I also printed up one with my laser jet printer that is it printed on both sides. Now remember when we centered the card, when you flip it over, the back section is also centered on the card. So when you cut the lines and you trim it out, they should be even and not leave hardly any white space at all, if any, if you've done it right. Here I've left a little area here where you can add an autograph. Now here's one I did recently for Hot Wheels USA doing some cars for those folks, limited edition club cars. Got my logo and everything on the back with all my sponsors and their websites. Here's a holographic certificate of authenticity that I made for the car that says prototype. And here I've signed the card in gold ink. Now guys, this will make your Hot Wheels and your restorations and your customs look professional all right and this was the whole purpose of this video was to show you how i do it now if you have any questions whatsoever please don't hesitate to contact me in the comments and ask now what i ask from you in return is if you're not subscribed to the page folks please do all right please do i uh love to have you follow me i love to answer your questions as best as i can and I do read everything, I promise. I might not answer it all, but I do my best to answer any questions that you have when it comes to your diecast hobby. All right? Let me do a few more things here in the background, and I'll get right back to you. Okay, we're back. Now that we've got the card all ready to go, now this is the one that I printed on both sides. All right? That looks excellent. Now, I'm not going to autograph this because I'm going to go ahead and send this to Keith, all right? And he can do with it what he wishes to. Now, Keith is a really huge fan of Chevy Chevelles, okay? Now, I'm not sure if he has this one or not, but you know what? I'm sending it to him anyway. Now, I've got this blister that I pulled off of another Hot Wheels mainline card, and I got it off using acetone, all right? And I'll have a video on that coming up in the very near future. Here on the edge, I've got some double-sided tape that I purchased off of Amazon. And you can buy it at Walmart and other places too. So what I do here is I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the double-sided tape. Now this is the part that you gotta really be careful in here because if you stick it down, it's stuck. All right, now both edges are exposed. Let's go ahead and put the car in. Now, I've got the card. I'm going to line the bottom of the blister and line it up with the plastic on the blister on the card here. All right. That looks good. Go ahead and set it down easily. All right. Excellent. Now, take your finger and rub it so it adheres to the double-sided tape. Same thing here at the top. Okay. Now, there's your card, folks. Now, I didn't put any on these other two wedges here because it's kind of overkill, all right? Now, I've got a brand new blister here. Let's go ahead and we'll put that card in. See how it fits in there? The 4 by 4.25 uh, inches by 6.5 inches, all right? And again, if you had your autograph there, that'd be freaking awesome, all right? So, let's go ahead and close that up. And there it is, okay? How can you get more professional than this, okay? This is how I make my custom cards. Now you're gonna have to experiment with different graphics programs, etc. But dude, guys, gals, whatever, this is awesome. This is flipping awesome, okay? You can take your cars to the next level, 
all right? Now, I do have a new web page coming up. It's already up, but I'll be adding more stuff to it. www.diecastgraveyard.com where you'll be able to buy some of the customs and the restorations and stuff that I make, okay? So if you get a chance, check it out. And later on and coming in the very near future, we'll also have some t-shirts, maybe some hats and a few other things. But to my friend Keith, uh, sorry for goofing on you, brother, but hey, I'm sending this to you because I love you, buddy. You're, you're a great artist when it comes to your die cast cars. You're a funny guy, and you're a darn good friend, and I'm glad that you're one of the four horsemen with me and Xavier and Jeff. But folks, there it is today. This is excellent. How to make a custom card for your die cast cars. Thanks for joining me today on Diecast Graveyard. This was a lot of fun. Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Put them in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. My name is Paul with Diecast Graveyard. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, and cheers.